In the top stories, Senator Phipps thanks School of Podology for its work in St. Kitts Nevis. Commissioner Quealy says the force will not protect bad cops. And Travelocity calls St. Kitts a must-visit island. We'll be right back with the details after this. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. I'm Jason Davis. Minister of State responsible for health, the Honorable Wendy Phipps, has emphasized the importance of the School of Podology's work in St. Kitts this past week, including a free foot care clinic. She was at the time speaking at the graduation ceremony for students at the School of Podology on Friday night at the Marriott Resort. She said the school's work is appreciated considering the Federation's ongoing challenge to tackle non-communicable diseases such as diabetes and their complications. When you combine the statistics of persons who are not only suffering from hypertension but at diabetes at the same time, because of that quantity of the over 1,100 registered diabetics, at least 300 of those are also hypertensive persons, so it's a double challenge for us here in St. Kitts and Nevis. She also spoke of the significance of the school's efforts in the Federation. Your visit is important to us because it helps us in terms of our health advocacy and promotional efforts, in terms of making people understand that they need to be more responsible for their own health care, and they at least should have a partnership role with stakeholder agencies like yourselves, non-governmental agencies, the government, their own private physicians, if they can afford that type of care, in terms of creating better health outcomes for us in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. The foot care clinic ran for five days at the Old Boys School, and the School of Podology wrapped up activities in St. Kitts with its graduation ceremony on Friday night. Commissioner of Police Ian Queeley says the force will not tolerate officers who have broken the law. During the Prime Minister's press conference last week, the Commissioner told the press that the force is not afraid to take action against officers who have been involved in illegal activities. We have never been afraid to investigate our own and we will not condone or cover up any illegal activities. As a matter of fact, um, we, we do have um, a couple of officers on suspension waiting for their day in court as it relates to um, criminal offenses that they have been alleged to, be, to have committed. Specifically referring to a case in Nevis where two officers were accused of robbing an individual, the commissioner said the matter is being investigated, but it takes time. Matters of those natures need time to investigate. The matter is currently being investigated. Um, I am aware that the file is on its way up the chain. And uh, as soon as we have the results of that investigation, we will take a decision um, one way or the other. Commissioner of Police Ian Queeley. In other news, Travelocity, an American online travel agency, has ranked St. Kitts among the top six Caribbean islands you need to visit now in 2017. An article dated the 2nd of February describes St. Kitts as, quote, one of the Caribbean's sweetest treats, end quote. The author writes, quote, Formerly a sugar-producing powerhouse, now the island is home to the last railway in the West Indies, an 18-mile journey that takes riders back in time. You can see so much of the island in just a few hours, all while sipping on tropical drinks and taking in the sea breeze. Volcano hikes, scuba diving, helicopter rides, and vervet monkey encounters round out some of St. Kitts's most epic adventures." End quote. The other five countries listed among the top six Caribbean islands to visit in 2017 by Travelocity.com include Bonaire, Aruba, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic. St. Kitts is the only Caribbean island among the others with its official language being English. Coming up, we'll have another look at some of the stories from the past week. Stay tuned. Need a new stove, fridge, bed, or TV? 
Short on cash? Come to Courts and let's get it done. Trade in your old items for 15% off the purchase of a new one and get what you need now with Courts Ready Finance. So let's get it done. Only at Courts. Bring in value home. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris has announced that the country's debt-to-GDP ratio now stands close to 60%, which is in line with international standards. This was revealed during a recently held Good Governance and Accountability for Prosperity Forum, where the Prime Minister and his ministerial colleagues gave an account of their stewardship since taking office. This Team Unity Administration has held true to its mandate to work for the people. What we say is what the central bank has said, that we are the best performing country in the Caribbean. What we say is what the Caribbean Development Bank has said time and time again. What we say is what the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean has said. St. Kitts and Nevis is performing better than all the rest. Prime Minister Harris, who is also the Minister of Finance, noted that under his watch, the Team Unity Administration, less than two years into its five-year mandate, paid off the country's debt to the IMF. In less than two years, to wipe out the IMF debt, $117 million we wrote off. Well, not wrote off, we paid off and bring an end to the national disgrace. We are the first time in the history of our country we went to the IMF begging. And I still come to the country to say, year after year, month after month, under my watch, the country is in surplus. On Friday, January 20, Dr. Harris reported in the National Assembly that, quote, the preliminary data shows that for 2016, the fiscal operations resulted in a recurrent account surplus of $128.3 million, an overall surplus of $130.3 million, and a primary surplus of $154.7 million. At a ceremony to mark the 82nd anniversary of the Buckley's riots on, sat on Saturday, Deputy Prime Minister the Honorable Sean Richards honored all those who sacrificed their lives in 1935. In his address at the anniversary ceremony, Minister Richards specifically mentioned Joseph Samuel, Alan James, and James Archibald. The sacrifice which they made and their family bore can never be measured, but must always be remembered. Others have given over time, but it is the ultimate sacrifice of their life which made it possible for others to give. He also noted that unemployed workers at that time put their lives in jeopardy to stand with the workers for a better future. We must also recognize that one of the first great sacrifices of 1935 was executed by the unemployed workers who agreed to stand with the workers on strike even though it potentially meant continuing in abject poverty. It is always harder to stand against tyranny when those in charge show no value for your welfare or even for your life. Minister Richards reflected on the theme of the 82nd anniversary, which is, we shall embrace the ultimate sacrifice of the Buckley's uprising. He noted that it is a timely reminder of the multifaceted nature of one of the most significant incidences of our nation's history. And speaking of history, History and Heritage Month 2017 was launched on Wednesday at Matheson House at Taylor's Range. More in this report. The 11th Annual History and Heritage Month of Activities was officially launched by Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Culture Honorable Sean Richards in the presence of history and heritage enthusiasts. Addressing the gathering, Minister Richards commended the History and Heritage Committee for its dedicated efforts over the past 11 years. I, of course, would want to commend the History and Heritage Committee for organizing not one day of activities, not a week of activities, but an entire month of activities during which we can reflect and during which hopefully we can make 
some positive changes. Because it's not merely just about reflection. But if at the end of it, no change is effected, then I think to some extent we would have wasted our energies. He said the promotion and preservation of our history and heritage will require a collaborative effort between the government and the public. Quite often I get the question from persons, what is the government doing to promote, to promote and preserve our culture, our heritage, our history? The truth is that the government can only do so much. It can put policies in place. The Department of Culture can organize activities. It can hold programs to create awareness and to stimulate action. However, at the end of it all, our culture is about all of us. The theme for the month is statehood, a milestone to freedom. President of the Brimstone Hill National Park Society, Sir Probin Innes, said statehood is a significant part of our history that must be taught. You can't believe it, but it's 50 years ago this year that we welcome statehood. On the 27th of February, 1967. And this is one of the things which we have to recognize. One of the reasons why we need to keep on reinforcing these things and reminding ourselves of these events is that the younger generation who are coming on really don't know about it. We have to tell them, we have to remind them, we have to encourage them to read more about these things. And this is one of the things which we hope we'll be able to do during the course of this month. Activities this year include a statehood lecture, a panel discussion, a cultural fair, and a social evening for seniors. There is a similar observance of History and Heritage Month currently ongoing in Nevis. According to the Brimstone Hill Fortress website, History and Heritage Month seeks to promote a greater awareness and appreciation of the history, heritage, and culture of St. Kitts and Nevis. The Rotary Club of Lamiga's Foot Care Clinic wrapped up its week-long foot care services on Friday. Shaira Flanders tells us more. Held at the Old Boys School under the leadership of founder of the North American School of Podology, Dr. Catherine Von Gavel, the Rotary Club of La Amiga has officially wrapped up its free foot care clinic. ZIZ visited the foot clinic and spoke with Dr. Von Gavel, who said that the local response has surpassed her expectations. We are so excited to have such a tremendous turnout. Uh, I think, as Roger said, we will probably be seeing close to a thousand people. It has totally met our expectations. We've, it's more than met our expectations. We have such wonderful people here and we've been able to help people that in some cases haven't ever had an, hadn't ever been able to cut their toenails for years and don't have, they don't want to ask anybody. So they come to us with years of growth and we're able to give them their feet back and make them look like they have new feet. After paying a courtesy call to Prime Minister Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, Rotary District Governor for District 7030, Roger Bose visited the clinic and said he believes the services would be most beneficial for families. I believe that the fi uh, figures that have been told to me previously were that several hundred people and perhaps even as many as a thousand people may eventually pass through here. So for people to get an opportunity to have their feet look after or, looked after or, or get some advice perhaps if they have a problem, um, especially knowing how important it is from a, the aspect of, I know there are many cases of foot problems when it comes to people who suffer from diabetes for example, so I would imagine that the advice and the treatment that they get here will be good for, for them and for them to pass on to their families. ZIZ spoke with one of the clients, 80-year-old Josephine Onu, who expressed how she felt after receiving care for her feet. I feel happy and I feel that I have new feet. <laughs> 
Nurses from the Community Health Services of the Ministry of Health were also on hand to provide health checks on blood sugar and blood pressure levels. The five-day hands-on clinic was organized to help kitchens and divisions with skin and nail-related foot problems that include extreme rough and dry skin, painful cracked heels, and severely thickened toenails. The foot clinic opened on Monday, January 30th, and provided its final treatment services at midday on Friday, February 3rd. And well, now that the foot clinic, the five-day foot clinic has wrapped up, it's back to work, back to North America, and well, I guess we'll have to wait until 2019 when they return and they serve the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis once more and give everyone new feet. Thank you all so much. We can't wait to come back and see you again. It's been a pleasure having you, Dr. Catherine Von Gavel. Thank you so much. <laughs> Reporting from the Old Boys School, I am Shaira Flanders for ZIZ News. After the break, St. Martin police investigating a daylight jewelry store robbery and protests continue against Donald Trump's immigration ban. Stay tuned. Need a new stove, fridge, bed or TV? Short on cash? Come to Courts and let's get it done! Trade in your old items for 15% off the purchase of a new one and get what you need now with Courts Ready Finance. So let's get it done! Only at Courts, bringing value home. The police in St. Martin are investigating an armed robbery which took place on Saturday at approximately 11.15 a.m. at Dazzling Gems on Front Street. According to reports, four masked and armed men arrived in the jewel store in a blue Suzuki Jeep with heavily tinted windows carrying an old taxi license plate. Amateur video showed the men using hammers to smash the jewelry showcases and removing a still unknown quantity of jewelry. The robbers then fled in the Jeep in the direction of Sucker Garden. Media reports indicate several police patrols were informed the, of the robbery and started searching the area for the suspects and the vehicle. The investigation is ongoing. On the international scene, on Saturday night, thousands of demonstrators took to the streets near the Florida estate of U.S. President Donald Trump to speak out against his executive order that limits immigration. Sarah Duffy reports. Thousands of protesters marched near the Florida estate of U.S. President Donald Trump to protest his now blocked executive order temporarily limiting immigration. Meanwhile, Trump attended an International Red Cross Gala fundraiser at his Mar-a-Lago resort. The protest began with a rally outside Trump Plaza in West Palm Beach. They then marched two miles to Trump's estate. We have a unique opportunity living in Palm Beach County um, to send a direct message to Donald Trump, uh, and not just to Donald Trump, but any organization that might be considering uh, choosing Mar-a-Lago as a venue. Um, and, you know, divesting is a great way in a, in a capitalist society to show your discontent with a, with a person or with a business. About 700 guests were expected to attend the White Tie fundraiser, outnumbered by the protesting crowd. Demonstrators shouted anti-Trump slogans and earlier in the day set up a flag-draped coffin that they said represented the death of democracy. There were also Trump supporters who showed up to defend the president. Cocktail hour on the lawn of Trump's estate ended with fireworks as about two dozen law enforcement officers in riot gear controlled crowds outside. Similar protests were held across the U.S. and in many European capitals. We'll be right back with a recap of the top stories. Stay tuned. Recapping the top stories, Senator Phipps thanks School of Podology for its work in St. Kitts Nevis. Commissioner Quealy says the force will not protect bad cops. And Travelocity calls St. Kitts a must-visit island. And that's it for the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jason Davis.